Okay, this is part five of uh, the repair of this two-way radio. It's a Cobra 200 GTL DX, uh, which is essentially, I think they're sold as a 10 meter radio, but they're essentially channelized and they cover 27 megs. So it's, it's more or less a, a citizen band multi-mode type radio. It's got quite a coverage on it. And I think these are 100 watts output on sideband. So let's just have a quick recap. The radio came to us uh, in a very sorry state. Um, somebody's obviously been in here trying to eat more power out of it. Obviously doesn't understand the laws of physics and caused an absolute plethora of damage that um, we've had to go and sort out. And there was quite a number of components that have failed. But we've managed to get the thing back together. We've got it, it's transmitting and it's receiving. The only problem now is that it's unstable. And the reason it's unstable is because there's loads of little trimmer uh, resistors in here. And they've simply been twiddled about with that much. They're so loose, they're just floating about. So if you tap the radio, um, it just it's just so unstable. So what we're gonna do, I've received an order from DigiKey, these are Bourne's replacement units. Of course, these are surface mount. So we're gonna fit those to the radio first, and then we're gonna carry out a full alignment. And hopefully, at the end, we'll see if we can do a bit of performance testing, and we'll see how this thing stacks up. Okay, if we look carefully, you can see how loose these things are. Um, what's happening is the wiper's not making connection with the the track and it's probably just a combination I don't think they're very good quality these um, in fact the build quality on the radio isn't great if I'm honest um, but that that being said that the, the main problem is this you can just see you're only going to touch it it's you can see that it's loose so this is how I remove them I'm not using hot air I'm just literally putting a bit of solder on the base very carefully just obviously don't want to catch any other components just put a bit of a blob on there and I because the base is actually um, it's ceramic so it's a good conductor of heat you can just give them a bit of heat and make sure it come off simple as that now obviously you've got to be careful because you don't want splashes of solder to go in. I'm gonna clean these up with solder wick now, but um, yeah, quite straightforward. So this is one I've removed. Um, I'm not sure who makes these. A lot of the stuff's made by KEC in that radio, so it may well be KEC. Um, the one I'm installing, these are the new ones. These uh, we got from DigiKey and they're made by Bournes, and they are TC33X series. Now obviously we've got the correct values. Um, there are three mil um, ceramic substrate uh, variable resistor. And this one looks bigger because it's, you know, it's square, but if you look at this one, it's got rounded off edges, so. But if you, you know, if I put the calipers on it, they are the same size. It's just a bit deceiving, but that'll fit on the footprint. I've replaced these two, and I'm gonna replace this one now. Now, of course, I'm gonna do this on camera because the video would not be complete without me putting one in, I guess. <laughs> What's this? I'm probably gonna make a balls of it, but here we go. Now, I'll put a blob of solder on that pad what I'm going to do, I'm going to get this and stop shaking. And she wants a bit of solder. It's hard to do this. I need the... I'm 
I'm actually doing this blind because I can't. I haven't got me magnifier, but I can just about see it. Come on. Let's have a look. Yeah, that's got it. Now, one thing I don't do is now I've soldered it, I'm not going to put any isopropyl on here because what it does, it gets onto the tracks. It mixes with the flux and sometimes the mass, you know, starts to mix with the isopropyl and it goes onto the track and then you've got a noisy track when it dries out. So I try and avoid putting isopropyl on pots if I can. But if I have to, I'll put loads on to really make sure it's clean. Okay, so as you can see, I've actually replaced uh, some of these um, potentiometers, little trim pots. I've only replaced uh, the ones that were really loose. Um, I haven't changed them all. Uh, I'm not a fan of shotgunning uh, components into to, uh, equipment, simply because you, know, you can induce uh, faults yourself and then you've got to go back and try and figure it out. Okay, so now let's start with the alignment process. Okay, so I am going to be following this uh, alignment procedure. Uh, I got it from the internet, and you can see there it's saying that it's from cbradio.nl, and it was prepared by a person called Burke. But uh, I don't know much about this document. However, it looks okay, and so I'm going to follow it. Okay, so I'm going to be starting here, uh, section two. This is the PLL alignment. So we set the radio to 28 megahertz on the dot, obviously RX mode, set to AM, and we put an oscilloscope to test point one, and we adjust T712 so that we uh, have got 2.8 volts, but we've got to be able to observe uh, a range from 200 millivolts to 7 volts DC. Then obviously second step, uh, we're going to connect a oscilloscope to test point 2, which is the first LO, um, and then we adjust T713 for maximum output. So this is basically a filter, um, and obviously they want, you want to peak it. And then for step 3, uh, we set the counter on TP2 and we adjust T711 and we have to adjust it for 17.305 megahertz. So we've got the radio, it's set to 28 megahertz, hopefully that's not blurred. And we set to AM, we're in receive mode. Um, I'm still using a so let's go, I'm just going to use my multimeter and we need to go to the test point, which is test point one. Okay, so that we're on the money. Um, and T702, I believe, is this one. I'm not going to adjust this. It's fine as it is, that's on the money. And it said to see if you've got a range, so I guess if we turn it down, yeah, that's on A band, and if we go up to D band, yeah, we, the range changes. So let's, okay, so, yeah, 2.8 volts, so we're on the money. Okay, so we're on the second step. Uh, you can see I put the oscilloscope on there. Just a quick recap. Uh, that's this one here, the first one, T712. I didn't adjust it because it didn't need adjusting. So we're now going to be adjusting T713. And what we're looking for is the maximum um, amplitude on the uh, display there. So if I put this in here... I don't know that you can see that, but it seems to, yeah, it's in. It's already peaked, but, uh, you know, that's in again. There's, uh, there's no problem with it. I don't like messing around with radios, as you know, if it unnecessarily, but um, 
At least we know that's on the money. Okay, we're on test point two. We've now got the frequency counter hooked up. And test point two is, we're picking it up, we're monitoring the first LO. And we're looking for 17.305. And we are on the money. Okay, you know, you've got to remember this is quite a sensitive uh, counter. It'll do down to one tenth of a hertz. But there's no point in trying to uh, attempt to <laughs> get this to anywhere near those sort of specs because they'll drift anyway, so naturally. And it doesn't have to be because it's just, that, you know, the nature of the radio. It doesn't have to be that. And th this is 7.11 here, and just so... Yeah, so if we can... This is not the best tool actually. Five, and I'll take it the other way, she'll go down. Okay, that's uh, that's pretty close. Okay, let's move swiftly along. Okay, so now we're going to set the carrier alignment. Basically, you know, these carriers, you know, obviously needed for the modulation and demodulation of certain elements within the radio. So, okay, so step one will be in TX mode, uh, set to AM, uh, frequency of 28 megahertz. And at test point three, we're going to be looking for 10.695 megahertz. And we need to adjust T716 in order to achieve that. Step two, we're in receive mode and we set to lower sideband and we adjust T714 and we're trying to achieve 10.6975 megahertz. And then step three, again, we're in RX mode at 28 megahertz and we adjust T715 um, obviously, we're in upper sideband on this one, and uh, we were looking for 10.6925 megahertz. Okay, so step one, we'll put this into AM, put it into TX mode, uh, just to, I've got the, I've inhibited the transmitter, so it's not going to do anything. I obviously, take those jumpers off, that's, it, that's the collector and the um, source drain voltages for the drivers so if we put this into transmit mode okay and we want to take a look at test point three okay and we're looking for 10.695 we're a bit low so we just t716 Okay, so step two is we go to, let's have a look, lower sideband, and we're looking for 10.6975, which we're pretty much on the money. Um, okay, and we just T714. So it's six. So we're looking for six nine seven five. We're I mean they're on it, but if we can possibly do some fine tuning, yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's good. And now we go to upper sideband, and we're looking for. 
10.6925, which we have to adjust this one. I forgot which one it is. Yeah. That's it. So now we move on to the receiver alignment. Um, this is section three. So what it's saying is, is to connect an AC VTVM, that's a vacuum tube voltmeter, which I don't have. So uh, it's just saying adjust the volume control to obtain a, a suitable indication. Set the signal generator low enough to prevent the AGC limiting. Now that's important when you're setting up um, receivers. If you're trying to peak the receiver and the AGC gets, kicks in, then it'll just start nulling the, uh, your, what you're trying to achieve. So it'll start limiting. Okay, so if we look at step one, we set the radio into receive mode. We're set to AM and we set to 28 megahertz, one kilohertz tone at 30% modulation. So that's gonna be AM and an RF output of one microvolt. And basically what we do, we adjust T703 through to T708. Uh, and also we adjust T710 and we adjust for maximum output on the vacuum tube voltmeter. Okay. Um, okay, set two, we set the signal generator up and we set it at 1500 microvolts to set the squelch on RV2. I'm not gonna do that because that seems to be working fine. Uh, step three, uh, AM mode, 29.5 megahertz. And, okay, yeah, so 29.5, we give it 100 microvolts. Well, I'll give it minus 73 d dBm, and that should, you know, we set RV15, and we set the, uh, S meter to read S9 on the radio. Okay, step four. That's the noise blanker. I'm not gonna be doing that because I haven't got anything to generate the noise. Well, I probably have, but I'm not gonna bother. Um, and step five is FM. So we literally go in FM mode. We set the signal generator up to send an, uh, an FM modulated tone at 2.5 kilohertz deviation and uh, set the output to one microvolt and tune T702 for maximum on the VTVM. Okay, I'm gonna do this somewhat different, but um, yeah, it, it, we'll get the same result. The service information is basically telling us to adjust these coils and it's these here and then it comes across, and I think it's that one as well. So what he's saying is we need to tune to 28 megs, and we, we inject a 28 meg signal in to here, and we want to peak the signal. So basically what we're doing is this section here, I think we've got a bit of impedance changing going on, but we've got a, it's the bandpass filter. So 28 megs is in the center of this radio's receive range. So it goes from 26 to 30 megs. So it obviously makes sense to tune all this, you know, to the center frequency. Now they were actually asking to, uh, you know, put a voltmeter, a, a vacuum voltmeter <laughs> onto the audio, which yeah, that'd be fine if you inject a, a signal into here, as I'm doing now with a one kilohertz tone, uh, you will see a level. And I guess if you adjust these, the level will go up and the level will go down. Now there are a few problems doing it that way um, because noise also will register as uh, a voltage. So we need to sort of find a way to separate the noise because obviously there's a noise floor and our signal is, wants to burst through it. And the, to the measurement of how well a radio is receiving is the sensitivity. Well, it's one of the measurements. So what 
I have done. I've picked these up now for obvious reasons. I don't want to be twiddling these. But we'll just go through. The, this is the front end. We've got a mixer here. And then from this section, this section onwards, it's IF, so it's fixed frequency. But again, you still, you still adjust it because we want the peak frequency. We know we've set the, the frequencies for the carrier oscillators and offsets and PLL and such like. So at our uh, desired um, IF, and in this case it's 10.695 megahertz, we'll have that signal injecting converted. And again, we just peak these up. Now I'm not going to do it on this because I think this radio deserves a well-earned rest from being twiddled around with. But that's it. Oh, and this this little uh, bad boy here, this can, that's to do with the noise blanker. Okay, test conditions. We're set to 28 megahertz. We've got, um, we're set to AM mode. Uh, I've got a bit of volume happening. We'll explain a bit more about that in a second. And what we're doing, we're injecting via the um, antenna socket a signal from this signal generator. So if we look, we are injecting a level of minus 100, 112 dBm, which is about 0.5 of a microvolt. We're seeing the frequency is at 28 megahertz. We set to AM type of modulation. We are modulating a one kilohertz tone on that uh, on that carrier, and we've got a modulation index of fifty percent. That's basically the modulation depth. And then coming away from the radio, we come away. We're set to um, well, set. We're connecting to an extension speaker. Uh, normally, I wouldn't really use an extension speaker, I'd use a resistor, uh, but obviously I want you to be able to hear this, so I've rigged it up with an, expense, with an extension speaker, and uh, it's no problem, it'll still work just as well. Um, and the reason I'd use a resistor normally is so I'd give the um, power, audio power uh, amplifier something to work against. So we then come away from there, from the speaker, and then we're going up into this test set. And what this test set is doing is measuring uh, synad. Um, so it's basically signal to noise. Um, synad's a little different to straight signal to noise because it measures um, total harmonic distortion plus noise. But, um, so ideally what we want for uh, an HF receiver, something like this in AM, and I've looked at the specs, we need to be able to achieve about 10 dBs of cyanide, and we are, and that's, we are actually getting that. Um, it's a bit tricky to, uh, to get these things working, you know, because you have to play around with the volume levels and, and stuff, because everything causes noise. But you can get a, there's a computer program you can get, and you can literally plug your uh, radio via a little loading resistor into a computer so on your pc you can actually measure signal to noise and synod but here we're measuring synod so this is giving us 10 10 11 uh, dbs of synod for 100 and, uh, minus 112 dbm which is good that's within the specs and if I was going to adjust that, I would be peaking this up to improve it. I'm not going to do it. It's within spec. Um, so, yeah. So now uh, we're injecting uh, minus 73 dBm, same as before. With um, we're sending a. In fact, we can actually turn off the modulation. So it's just a dead carrier. And what we're going to do is set the S meter. Now that's supposed to be the S9. It's off the scale because obviously it's been played around with. So we're going to set that to S9. Now I did notice that on that service information we've got, 
it said that it wanted to see wanted us to inject a hundred microvolts, which I think is wrong because HF radios, um, anything in the HF range, you know, we uh, S9 is minus 73 dBm, which I think is about 50 microvolts. Let's have a look. Where are we? No, oh, that's dB microvolts. Ah, here we go. Yeah. Which is correct. So let's put that back at dB. I'm used to using dB, so, you know, it's just the way I am. Um, so we need to adjust that now for S9. Okay, so now I'm going to adjust RV15, and we're going to try and get the meter display in S9. Find it. Okay. Okay, so we're now set to minus a hundred and eighteen DBM. Uh, Bring to 28 megahertz. We're now modulating in FM, and we've got uh, we're modulating a one kilohertz tone at a deviation of 2.5 kilohertz, and the radio is set to FM. So we're going to be adjusting uh, L's. I think it's 702 or T702. This is the inductor. Uh, that makes up the um, FM discriminator circuit and we're going to see what we can achieve sine ed by adjusting it so let's move that out of the way sorry about the screen it's uh, it's just reacting with the the camera um, okay so let's, let's see we can Okay, so about 14 dB of sine ad for a minus 118 uh, FM. Again, that's that's good. That's that's fine. Okay, so all the little variable pots are fitted. I've totally aligned the transmit i'm not going to go through every little detail so i'm going to skim over the transmitter um we're just going to i'll just go to the key points and uh, show you what's uh, everything's working um i know one people want to see a full alignment but uh, i just don't know you know it's the time the video is getting on as it is so um, i may dedicate a video to aligning a radio complete uh, from front to back but um yeah, at the moment, uh, I've got the clock against me. So, yeah, let's go through this. I'll show you what I've done. It's fully functional, and it's doing everything it should do, which is nice. Okay, so we set to AM, and I'm going to put it into transmit mode. Uh, we're on low power, and we're producing... Uh, five watts uh, dead carrier well, well it's not dead carrier I'm uh, sending a tone through it but it doesn't matter okay and if we increase the power uh, full power it's doing 32 watts as it should as it should do okay this is single sideband uh, we're injecting an audio signal of one kilohertz at 30 millivolts into the mic path uh i'll just turn the um which one's the yeah I'll turn the rf gain up so on low power we set to upper side band let me put the 
Okay, so she's producing about 10 watts on low PR on uh, upper sideband. And if I throw it on to high PR, she's just doing, I've got it set to just shy of 100 watts. Uh, it's doing about 95 watts. It'll easily go well over 100, but I, I, don't, I can't see the point in ragging these things. Okay, so on AM uh, transmission, this is injecting 30 millivolts of audio signal. And we've got, you see that, we've got a modulation depth of uh, 90, which is uh, as per the book. Okay, transmission in FM mode, uh, injecting 30 millivolts. And if we look up deviation, we are getting around 2.7. Um, that's what I've said, 2 um, kilohertz deviation, which, uh, which is about right for this thing. I normally set it about 2.5, but I'll set it in the middle. Okay, we're in upper sideband. If we look at the scope, we're connected to the RF out. That's um, just to check the nulling of the balance modulator. I'll swap it over to upper sideband. You see it's null. And just to prove that there's no jiggery pokery. Where is it? We'll give it a turn. These are all new potentiometers, so uh, they're nice and stable. The other one was, would uh, spin like a fan if it, you, you blew on it. So, <laughs> yeah, but that's all correct. Okay, well, that is the end. Um, the only thing I'm going to do now is uh, screw it back together and leave it on soap for 24 hours, and then uh, it can go home. So... Yeah, it's been quite a journey. I'm sorry it's not a very, uh, a very <laughs> uh, finish to this series, but if you have watched them all or you've been watching them, I just say, well, yeah, thanks for watching. It, it, uh, it's certainly been a journey. There's been a, a lot wrong with this. And uh, I must admit, it was quite satisfying to put the potentiometers in because now it's as solid as a rock because before it was all over the place. But... Um, as you can see, the, the transmission, everything's where it needs to be. The only thing I haven't um, re checked is the noise blanker. But having said that, I did actually throw it on an antenna. I've got power lines by here, so um, and I just managed to null it out the best I could on on there. So I'd imagine that uh, you know that's that's the correct setting. I, I don't really have anything for noise generation. I, I think the test equipment can do it, but uh, yeah, it's something I'm going to have to look at. But uh, yeah, it's nice to uh, to see the other end of this. <laughs> it's, it's been the hardest radio I've ever had to fix, I must admit. And I've really fixed up some knackers in my time. So, uh, But now it seems to make quite a nice radio. I know people go on about them. There's problems with the tuning or something. I... There's things I, but it's, I don't like about them, but it's just how they are. Uh, the receiver seems to perform quite well. It's got a nice punchy receiver, and it's easily doing 100 watts on sideband. It's got absolutely no problem. I mean, I, I, I'm throttling it back. I, I know it, I can see why people blow them up. I've got this one set at about 90, but uh, this there's a the driver device tends to go so. You know, you never notice 10 watts of difference anyway, you, you know, it's or even 20. Um, it, it's just so little once you start getting up in power. Um, you know, I can't see the sense in overdriving it, so. Okay, well, I'm looking forward to see, because uh, I haven't got a proper antenna or anything, but uh, when it goes back to uh, the owner, he can uh, stick it on an antenna and hopefully we can watch him, uh, you know, make some uh, QSOs and stuff with it. Okay, well, we'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching.